This video is about FACO in Morganian cataracts. I am Arup Chakrabarti and I have no financial interest in the contents of this video presentation. Now, uh, this is the first uh, video that I wanted to show you. Side ports and uh, temporal clear colon incision are constructed uh, like in any other uh, routine case. The anterior capsule is stained with trypan blue dye. The anterior chamber is pressurized by adequate volume of OVD. The clear corneal incision is opened with a McPherson forceps and a linear anterior capsulotomy is fashioned with a 15 degree paracentesis blade itself. Alternatively, a cystitum can also be used. Explosive release of liquefied lens matter is prevented by the high pressure environment in the anterior chamber. The slowly escaping white liquefied lens matter obscuring further view is carefully aspirated under low parameters, taking care not to shallow the anterior chamber. Rapid irrigation currents within the capsular bag at this stage may risk peripheral extension of the linear capsulotomy. Though the capsular tear was extension in this case was minimal, Visco expression of the leaked out lens matter would perhaps have been a safer alternative. The linear capsular opening is converted into a continuous geometry as a prelude to performing a definitive capsulotomy, which in this case happened as a multi stage procedure. After the initial decompression, there should not be further risks for rexis extension to the periphery. Like in all white cataracts, it is a standard practice to have the micro forceps and the micro scissors handy. As you will see here, the nucleus is uh, freely mobile and uh, pretty large. So I would prefer to have uh, the rexes sized between 5 and 5.5 millimeter in diameter. Anything less than that uh, would mean uh, increased uh, stress upon the capsular zonular apparatus while manipulating the nucleus within the capsular pack. So uh, the rexis is uh, 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 the desired size rexis is achieved here in multiple stages, and uh, the surgeon should be adept in handling uh, both the micro rexis scissors and the forceps working from the side port incision as well as the main incision. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, rexis extension at this stage uh, is not to be expected and it will be an iatrogenic problem if at all it happens. So once the rexis is carefully obtained, uh, the phacomalsification generally progresses uh, quite uh, smoothly. Uh, the rexis is not quite round here. So I uh, again incise the margin of uh, the rexis to make uh, it a, a good uh, circle, a good uh, geometrical uh, shape for uh, performing a safe uh, FICO emulsification. Disassembly of the nucleus uh, becomes challenging due to its excessive in the bag mobility and a direct exposed, exposed status of the posterior capsule to the FICO tip in the absence of cortex and epinuclear bowl. The posterior capsule tends to be quite floppy in many situations. In the given case, an oblique chop technique is employed using the goiter megatip and the sharp and long chang chopper. The megatip has been buried deep into the substance of the central nucleus. The distal peripheral margin of the nucleus disc is lifted and marginally is uh, centralized before chopping is initiated. All manipulations are to be confined to the central bag, thereby avoiding undue stress to the capsule, which are transmitted to the zonules. The FICO parameter settings should just be right to ensure a proper hold on the nucleus as chopping continues. Post-occlusion surge has additional perils in morganian cataracts and, and ought to be avoided. The freely mobile nucleus and its components have a tendency to float anteriorly an adequate attention has to be paid to the corneal endothelium. I prefer to top up the anterior chamber with repeated injections of a dispersive OVD. 
Dispersive OVD is also injected into the capsular fornix in view of the potential zonular weakness and the need to split the capsular band. Some surgeons recommend an anterior chamber phaco after pre-pressing the dial in the capsular bag, dial scaffold technique. I would uh, uh, not recommend a planned anterior chamber phaco due to its potential trauma to the condyle endothelium. Phaco parameter settings are continuously calibrated to enhance the anterior chamber stability and minimize nucleus chatter. After the successful nucleus management, a CTR is injected into the capsular bag prior to IL implantation since I felt I was dealing with a floppy posterior capsule. So friends, with increasing awareness, the incidence of complex situations like Morganglion cataracts, ultrahead cataracts, etc. have come down. Though we witnessed a spurt during the last few years of the current COVID pandemic. In summary, uh, the patient should be counseled not to unduly and indefinitely delay the cataract surgery. The surgeon dealing with these challenging situations should be, hand, should be expert or adept in handling the complexities of the situation and the potential complications, which could include the rexis issues, the potential difficulties in nucleus disassembly, the possibility of a posterior capsular rent or posterior dislocation of the nucleus and endothelial damage. Proper counseling as regards the potential intraoperative challenges and suboptimal outcomes is of utmost importance. Thank you very much for your kind attention.